How are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome. What's going on, everybody? Great to have you today on the Worship Team Training Show, Worship Team Training University. How are you guys? We hope that you guys are having a fantastic Tuesday. What is going on? We have our guest right here that's about to come on in just a second, and I'll tell you a little bit, a little bit about who he is because everything's okay. Just checking the OK button. Uh, good to see you. Welcome. Brandon Dempsey, Worship Team Training, Worship Team Training University. So glad that you guys are here. It is Tuesday, and we have the show. We are ready to go. we got a lot of great things coming your way. Uh, welcome, everybody coming in right now on Periscope. Facebook Live, thanks so much. You guys are beautiful. Thanks for the hearts, Periscope. we got Annie. What's going on? Jerry, I saw you. What's up on Periscope? Thanks for joining us. You guys listening by playback on the audio broadcast as well. Ryan, what's up, dude? Good to see you. Kayla, what's going on? Uh, great people coming in. Uh, a lot of you guys saw our um, um, Aho. What's up, Ajo, on uh, Facebook Live? Thanks, Matt. What's going on, Teresha? What's going on? Who else is in the worship team training house? Great to see you, you guys. Listening back on iTunes and Spreaker. Thanks so much. You guys are special, and our special, special WTTU members. Kayla, what's up? How are you, sweetheart? Kayla is one of our fantastic members too. Uh, that follows what we do. Thanks so much. Ryan, you're awesome. If you would, take this time right now and share this out with your friends if you're listening by audio broadcast. Also, of course, by uh, watching by Periscope, Facebook Live. Please do us a favor and share this out. And also welcome all of our Worship Team Training University members that are watching right now. Thanks so much. We have a great topic for you today. Aren't you tired? Just quit. Just give up. Quit. That's what we're going to talk about today. Quit what? Well, you can probably fill in the blank with a lot of those things, but we're going to come at you and talk about how that relates to leading worship. And when I say quit, what does that really mean? So let's get right to it. Before we get to our special guest today, uh, I want to also give out to you guys the link to follow us and um, on our newsletter that just went out yesterday. Uh, by the way, let me just say real quick who I am. My name is Brandon Dempsey of worshipteamtraining.com and Worship Team Training University. And you can find us also at WTTU.co. And we also want to be nice on the broadcast because if not, we'll just send you to the Sunday school party. Okay? So I'm Brandon Dempsey. Uh, we, we broadcast live just like this on Tuesdays once a week here on Periscope Facebook Live at 11 a.m. Central. And also when you become a Worship Team Training University member, you see us twice a week plus more videos, more content, and webinars. I'll get to that stuff in a little bit. So uh, here are these scopes broadcast for worship leaders, teams, musicians, singers, techs, pastors, just like you. Thanks so much for coming today. So the link I wanted to share with you to jump on our newsletter list that you can get every morning directly to your inbox is right there. It's called worshipteentraining.com e-news, and I am tweeting that out right now. And also sharing that with those of you who are looking to learn and looking to follow our uh, broadcast. Uh, last week, if you remember, we had Rick Muchow on, and that was fantastic. We had a great time. Also, we had John Chisholm on an awesome, spectacular songwriting webinar. And John's going to come back later on this summer. You don't want to miss it. And uh, also, wow, speaking of songwriting, you guys have asked me, you've asked, you've asked, you Snapchat at me. By the way, that's Worship TT if you want to follow us on Snapchat. Uh, you guys have messaged, you've texted, even you got my text. I don't know how that happened. But you're asking, hey, when is the songwriting contest coming back? The worship team training, worship songwriting contest coming back. It is here. Now, you can follow the link. I just put it up on Facebook Live, and also I'm tweeting that out again on um, Twitter. And the deadline is May the 26th. So if you enter and go to the link that I sent you, you can read all the details there. Uh, all you need to do is just write a biblical four-minute worship song. You must not be a signed artist with a label, okay, or co-write with one. It has to be you only, uh, novice type. And uh, the grand prize is a Shure microphone. Uh, from Shure, and also we have uh, prizes from Kaiser, Kaiser Capos, Worship Musician Magazine, and GuyTracks.co. Uh, a lot of great things coming up, so you want to be sure to check out that link and be sure to get your songs ready because we know you got songs that you haven't finished and you got songs that you want people to hear. Hey, 
Why not enter the contest and also the grand prize winner? Their song will be submitted to folks in the Nashville songwriting industry, and your song will be reviewed. So, hey, you can't beat that. If you want some free uh, reviews, man, you can't get that anywhere. So you got to check out the contest. I just sent it out right there. Also, be sure, be sure to grab the new book, The Journey of a Worshipper. Uh, thank you, guys. A lot of y'all had uh, uh, expressed your thanks to me for writing it, so thank you. I want to especially thank Michael Peeler, my editor, for doing all the hard work, and also uh, guys at Faith Life, uh, um, uh, Logos Bibles, a lot of great people that have went into the making of this. So it's out there. You can get the link, The Journey of a Worshipper. You can find it at WTTU.co and also find it on the links that I just sent out to you. Let's get to today. Today's training, we are talking today's show about why. Why? Why force it? Why do this kind of thing? As far as us leading worship today, we are going to hear from our friend, Jeff Crandall, I'd like for you guys to know who this uh, gentleman is. He has been helping us with our worship team training exclusive group for worship leaders. He's been managing that group webpage site for us, and he's been doing an awesome job. Uh, so before I bring him on, I just want to say a little bit about him as far as what he's been doing, what he's up to. Uh, this guy and I go back uh, 15 years or so. Uh, Jeff's been a great friend. And he now is worship leader over at Presidio Church in Phoenix. Am I right about that? Tucson. Jeff? Tucson. In sorry. Tucson. Yeah, I don't right. want to. I don't want to upset the Tucson people. All right. So <laughs> get that straight, right? And uh, also, he's a worship mentor and worship with our good friend um, over at Worship Catalyst. And uh, it's been uh, Ryan Austin's the guy over there. Ryan, good to see you too. Great friend. And also, he's a volunteer in our church. So uh, let's go ahead, everybody, and welcome. Jeff Crandall, how are you doing today, Jeff? Good. How are you doing, Brennan? Great, man. Thanks so much for being yeah. with us today. Hey, thanks for having me. Yes. I'm looking forward to it. Yes, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing more from Walter. From Walter. Okay, yes. that's me. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Jason Wallace is in the house on Periscope. Uh, we want to ask you guys, too, as we go through today's show, to talk about Jeff's problems and why he needs to quit. Please, message us. Just go ahead and type in the comment box window, type in your question, thought, ideas, same thing, Periscope, Facebook Live, and also you're listening to the playback right now. Jeff, what is your problem? Why well, can't, if, would you if people know me, they might have a long, long list of what my problems are. <laughs> we screen every person, Barry screens everybody that comes in here, and somehow you made it through. So oh, okay. um, so tell us, you know, we're talking this, this week later on, guys, you can't miss it. This Thursday, Dwayne Moore is going to be on the program. You can't miss it. He's going to be talking about why you cannot force them to worship. And that's what we're talking about today. So, yeah. Jeff, what do you need to stop? What, where do you find yourself where you, you say, I need to quit? What is that? I, I need to quit. Um, you know, I've quit jobs before. But um, <laughs> as far as... Not the as, kind of quitting we were far. talking about, but that's okay. Lisa, as far as you? as far as worship goes, <laughs> yes. you know, um, leading worship and and trying to force things, uh, I just find that you can't do that. You have to quit trying to force things with your congregation or even with your team, um, and you just have to live it. And if you live it, you know, worship is we've heard this before. It's more caught than taught, right? Yeah. And you do have to teach some of it, but um, you, know, you can't force people to worship. And that's a conversation on. Facebook pages and other things all the time. How do I get my people to worship? They just won't participate. Um, and you just need to do it and not uh, not try to force it. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about, before we jump more into that, your background. How did you get into this thing called leading worship that scares people to death, yeah. you know, but excites yeah. them at the same time? Tell us all about that. Well, I could go on a long time, but I... The we, Lord only have, a, we only have 30 minutes. Okay. The Lord made a clear right. call in my life when I was 16 years old. And um, all I can say is, uh, you know, uh, it was clear. And when I was 16 years old, it was just a few years ago. Um, they weren't using drums in church back when I started. And I knew that that's what God wanted me to do. Um, it was mostly choir robes and guys, you know, directing like this. Yeah. And that, I knew God didn't, not that there's anything wrong with doing that, 
but I knew that that wasn't what God called me to do. And so it was a long path that took me through a, a punk band in the eighties as kind of training in music. I was in a band called the altar boys. There you go. Time. Yeah. Just a couple years back. And then I landed at my first church and um, it was something that God clearly called me to do. And I went through kind of school of hard knocks. There wasn't much training when I started doing it 25 so years ago and um, just had to learn just school of hard knocks and uh, conferences uh, Stan Endicott was a huge help way back in the early yeah. Maranatha days. Yep. And um, uh, so having paid folks like you now and like Worship Catalyst and others to help train and mentor people is huge. Um, okay. Back then it was just get your guitar and put a band together and see what happens. Right. <laughs> well, it's still kind of that way, isn't it? Uh, it? You know, it is, but at least there are people around now to get pointers. True. You know. And there were fewer, there were much fewer of those, you know, back in the nineties when I started doing it. Yeah. Um, wow. He said the nine word. Yeah. I was in the nineties, you know, I was only like 14, something like that. That just got oh, real. Maybe, maybe I was older than that. <laughs> you were nine. Okay. Sure. <laughs> I, was, I was like nine, nine in the nineties. Yeah. Sure. Why not? You know, we're already on the nine number. It just sounds good. No, they figured I'm a liar. Yeah. Right? yeah. Well, we don't want that. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, uh, now tell us, like, I mean, what what problems do you have when it comes to leading the church in worship? You know, one of the um, one of the issues is that you can get so wrapped up in um, who's participating and who's not. You know, are they raising their hands? Or are they sitting on their hands? Or are they singing? Um, and you can get so wrapped up in that that you forget that you're really supposed to be worshiping too. You're supposed to be having this conversation with God as part of your worship time. And you're always having kind of a conversation with the church, with the congregation itself, as you're leading them. Um, but you can't get so wrapped up, especially in the ones that don't seem to be participating, because you really don't know if they're participating. Even if they're not raising their hands, some people are not hand raisers. Some people are not singers. It doesn't mean they're not entering in. Um, so, you know, I just try to put things in the right key, pick singable songs and give them all the opportunities they can and stop begging them to do it. Um, just do it. And I find that people enter in a lot easier if I'm not preoccupied with begging and pleading and, you know, accusing them of not doing it. You know? Okay. So if I may stop you, what brought yeah. you, what, what brought you to that point where you said, I'm going to stop begging. How did that happen? Yeah. Um, you know, I've, I'm kind of a little bit wired that way. Um, when I'm on stage, I'm real personable. I'm like, I'm the same on stage as I am off stage. And um, I, I think that's, that helps me connect with the congregation. Um, and so there were times early on, and it's mostly because worship leaders talk about how people don't participate. It kind of gets us all wound up. Um, and I just figured, you know what, I'm just going to do it. And so it was way early on. It was reinforced. I was fortunate enough to be able to go to the Hillsong Conference in Sydney um, back when uh, Darling Czech was still the worship pastor of, of the church. And um, just watch, hearing a lot of the conference speakers, a lot of the seminars, and watching and the example that they gave us on stage really helped cement that to me. Just enter in, participate, involve the congregation as best you can, but, um, you know, you, if you're not engaging God, nobody else will either. And so you kind of have to be that example. Hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. So well said like that. You mentioned, um, you mentioned about how you have to worship. Well, what about there's worship leaders out there right now listening and watching that say, yeah, but there's that one person who either gives me the beef, he, he, you know, they, they they beef it at the end of the worship, or they come to me. They say something, or during worship they just have their arms folded. Uh, they they look at me with this like really ugly eye. So yeah. how yeah. do you how do you deal with that? How did you deal with that, uh, or still deal with that on an ongoing basis? Yeah, I've had you know I think every worship leader has people that complain about them or bellyache about things. Um, I don't focus on them. I always figure that if um, if you get a few of them that don't like what you're doing, you're probably doing a good job. 
<laughs> that sounds awful. Yeah. Um, but you, but you really can't. One. You can't really can't please everybody. And if you're trying to please that one or two or three, then the rest of the congregation gets left in the dust as far as what they want or respond to. Um, so I try not to worry about the one or two and uh, focus on that. It's like you don't worry about the ten percent; you focus on the ninety yeah. percent. And most people are doing. Most people are happy with what you're doing. Um, there was an older. There was a couple at the church that I first started at. Um, when I first started, I didn't really know what I was doing. I came right out of the rock band, went to seminary for a few years, and, and then started leading worship. And uh, people complained about whether it was volume or the rock style or whatever it might have been. And they were a little older at the time, and the church started in their living room. And so hmm. when people complain, I just go, why don't you go talk to John and Faye? And they'll, you know, if they, it, see if they like it, you know, because they were one of the, some of the older ones in the church. Oh, okay. And they would always say, nah, we love it. And since it started in their living room, that gave me a lot of credibility. Oh, yeah, sure. It was huge. Is that, is that where you put the drum cage was in their living room? Yeah. <laughs> no, that, at that church, we actually used electric drums because we were in a gym. Oh, wow. You know, so it really helped to at least, you know, contain the sound. Because it was so live in there. Well, I've seen, I mean, remember, I visited your church over at High Desert uh, uh -huh. in California, and you didn't, you didn't have a drum cage. You had, a yeah. dr you had an igloo on wheels. Yeah, it was huge. You had an igloo on wheels, and it had like this, it looked like the, uh, the shaky uh, glass ball thing where you shake for the snow comes down. Yeah, had snow this, globe, yeah. the snow globe on top of the drummer's head, and then this igloo-type thing around them with wheels on the bottom. You can just wheel it everywhere. Yeah. You know? And yeah. so how do you how do you deal with volume issues when people tell you, you know, during worship or after like, well, it's too loud. How do you what do you do with that? Well, again, I kind of take this. The you can't please everybody kind yeah. of approach. So we do monitor it and to see how loud it is. Uh, at Presidio Church, we don't because we're in a little club slash theater downtown Tucson. And it's a little hard to, to control the volume in a space like that. And plus, since you're in that space, you know, people kind of understand a little bit more what they're getting. Yeah. Um, so what I've tried to do is just find a reasonable decibel level and just monitor it. And then I also have my uh, my audio guys mix it a little darker than they want. You know, you can't mix con rock concert level. I think if you mix a little darker in church, use darker symbols, you know, EQ it a little darker, it's a little bit more pleasing to people. Um, but you're not going to please everybody. Um, and the, one thing we have to be aware of, though, is if people have hearing aids, if they're older and have actual hearing damage, it really does cause, it can yeah. cause pain. You right. know, it just is an issue. But you can't, you know, if you're going to get younger families and younger folks to come, you can't mix to the people who have problems with their hair, their, their hearing. You know, it's just, um, it's just, it's, you just can't mix to that. So we have a little thing of of, uh, of earplugs for people, um, <laughs> and some people think that's awful. But um, you have to mix for the majority, not the minority. It's just, but you have to be sensitive to that minority. So, um, yeah, it's it's hard. I um, I like what um, uh, Jason on Periscope said. He he just uh, sent us a message that said using the special volume slider so like when people uh -huh. complain you can say you know what um i'm going to break out the special volume slider just for you no one else knows about it but i'm going to use <laughs> it just i'm going to use it on you <laughs> nice. so jason said so we have a non-functional slider that's where you, there you go <laughs> and then you can show... you just that little bit. <laughs> yeah uh, you can take a picture of it see we actually did this and text it to him right that's um, funny exactly so yeah. um what Okay, now let's flip it on the other foot. When you're dealing with your worship team, right? Yeah. And they see and they experience the struggle with the church about whatever it is, complaining and, you know, or they're not worshiping. How do you encourage the members of your own team now within that tide? Yeah, yeah, that, and that can be even tougher. Yeah. Um, so a lot of it is getting to know them, you know, spending time. I prefer to put my 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 worship team into actual teams. So the same guys play together all the time. Um, I've had churches that were large enough to where I've had three or four teams. And um, in that kind of situation, the, the team members get to know each other and then they can encourage each other through that. And a lot of that is to model it to them. Um, 
you know, as I live it, not just when I'm on stage in front of people, but um, away from that in rehearsals, um, having lunch with them, all that stuff. If I'm living my faith to them, it helps them participate because they have faith in who they're following in a sense. Uh, also, I've, I try to have immediate visits with appointments with each one of my uh, team members on a regular basis so I can enter into their lives, ask them things like, you know, how's your marriage? How's your devotional life? Um, you know, are you coming to church every week? You know, those kinds of things. Trying to, um, not that every week's a magic formula because, um, yeah. you know, you um, can. Here comes Chef again. Can, yeah, you can check that <laughs> box and not have it mean anything, you know? Yeah. So, um if I know them better, then I know that, hey, sometimes it's time to take a break. You know, they're just playing, going through the motions, and maybe they need a little bit of a rest for a little while to build up their spirit again. Um, so it helps to know them. If you, the better you know them, the more you can encourage them and find out why are they not entering into worship with you. Because hmm. um, that's really the bigger thing with your team members in particular. Because you, can, you can't do everything about the 10% that are out in the congregation, but you can monitor your team. And yeah. love on them through tough times. Yeah, that's a good word, Jeff. Yeah, yeah Keila liked uh, a lot of what you said, uh, stepping into persons, people's lives. She thought that was good. She also said it helps us to know that we aren't just being used. Yeah. That's a great one. Thanks for that, Keila. Yeah, sure. Um, do you feel like, I mean, how do you help your worship team members through to help them understand that they're not just being used for making music, but they're actually uh, ministers? Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the things I do is I value their, their creativity and uh, their personalities, even in the music. Um, I don't really, you know, sometimes you end up covering songs, worship songs that you learn from other people, and that's good. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I prefer to uh, approach it kind of as a guideline, an arrangement that's been done already, and then encourage the creativity to come out of my team. So if I'm valuing their creativity and valuing that kind of values them as people. Hmm. So if they have ideas on how to change a song up, change a feel, change the hook, change it, you know, the melody line has to pretty much stay the same because people hear the songs. Yeah. They need to know what they're going to sing week to week. Um, but the rest of it, you can play with it. And, right. uh, and I think that makes them feel valued hmm. um, as opposed to just being, you know, I'm, not that there's anything wrong with tracks. People are always going to take this thing wrong, but you know, I'm just a robot. You know, if I'm not here, they'll turn on, push the button on the machine, and they don't really need me. Yeah. Um, so there's got to be a balance to that, mm. you know, mm. one way or the other. So how about a time, can you, can you take us through, um, you know, you talked about balance, speaking into your team members. I mean, all that stuff is, is great stuff that we need to be aware of. Um, what about when things weren't so great? Can you tell us about a time that you just blew it? in leading worship, and then how did you make it through? Um, yeah, I can tell you. I can tell you more when I've blown it life. Like you know, I said, we've only have so much time on the show. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, there was a period of time where I was a very, very angry man, and I was leading worship every week. You really That's are not me. Walter, are you? Uh, no, just, I'm not Walter. You said although, angry. Although people might have thought I was <laughs> Walter. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, Emra. That was fine. Go ahead. Are people getting so, that reference? I don't know. If no, they're not. They're not. I don't think anyone's making the connection yet. Probably, and just until now, I, I would. They'll, they'll look it up. There you um, go. Yeah, but there was a time when I was really angry, like super angry, and I had to lead worship every week. And um, and this, you know, happens in a in a given service too. But this was kind of over a period of time, and I had to allow myself to feel what I was feeling because it was valid. And I had reasons to be upset about certain things that were going on, hmm. but I needed to, I had to put all that aside so that when I came to worship, I could worship and I could lead people in worship and I wasn't a distraction. So I think the important thing when it happens, whether you're flubbing up a service or whether it's a rough patch in life, you have to understand and remember that God is who he is. He's sovereign. He's in control. He loves you. He loves me. And um, even in times when I feel like I'm blowing it, I can still stand firm on that, on who God is. Mm -hmm. And he is worthy of our worship, whether I feel like it or not. Mm -hmm. And that helps me feel it when I'm up there, is to know for uh, a fact that whether I'm, quote unquote, performing well um, mm -hmm. is irrelevant to who God is. 
Right. Um, so you stand on those facts and press ahead on what, sometimes you have to press ahead on what you know is right, not what you feel is right mm -hmm. or not what you feel at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so that's generally speaking, kind of the way I've approached it. Um, yeah. There's one, there's one time early on, uh, in my ministry that my wife and I had a little spat, not that we ever do that, but we had a little spat and it was happened to be, I was a hundred percent wrong. But we talked about it like right before I had to go on and do a service. And um, I was super distracted. And it was really hard for me to worship that day, to lead worship. It was difficult. But I had a job to do. I had to go up and uh, and get it right and worship the Lord. So I just gave it over to him. And um, we don't have those phone calls anymore, which is awesome. Uh, <laughs> we had to have a deal on that. Um, but, you know, God was worshiped anyway, regardless of how I felt. And um, you just have to go on hmm. and do it. Yeah. So even as something as simple as um, Amy says, I've had many spats with my son right before worship. Um, that's a, yeah, I mean, it makes, it does make it hard. Amy's, that's yeah. what Amy's saying. Even among your team, how do you deal with that? When there's a spat within your team right before worship. Oh man, I can tell you, I had a guy mess with my guitar amp once, right before I went on. And I am a, I am a uh, rhythm guitar player. I'm a novice at getting my amp sounds. So once I get it sounding the way we want it, you don't touch it because I can't do anything yeah. on the fly. I got too many things going on. Yeah. And um, and so I hit my first guitar chord, and it about blew the room open. Wow. And, you know, the ceiling about, it was so God. loud and, and a problem. <laughs> and so I was, that wasn't just before going on stage, that was on stage. Wow. And I was fuming. And and somehow I had to go on and get over it and lead worship. And um, afterwards, me and the guy had a really hard, good heart to heart, you know, about touching other people's gear. Um, and he never did it again. Um, <laughs> was he alive again? Uh, he was alive again. Yeah, okay. there should be a song about that. Just making sure. Uh, yeah, and uh, but it, but you know it's difficult because I was really angry, not just in general, but at him, and um, I had to get past it. You know, you just have to press past it. You have to do the worship set the way you designed it, knowing that God is who He is. He's the reason we're there in the first place, and then you deal with whatever conflicts you have after the service. Uh, whether they're really super serious or just uh, a conversation that's easy, um, whatever it might be, you just have to stand firm on who Jesus is and then press ahead, knowing that you can deal with it later. Hmm. Um, and it's not always easy. In fact, it's it's really always hard <laughs> when, hmm. when it comes to that. But um, regardless of what I'm going through, Jesus is still worthy of being praised. And, um, you know, we need to lift up the name of God. And, and make him famous and make him known. And um, that and again, goes on regardless of how the tough time we're having or the argument we're having with anybody. Yeah. So like when we lead worship, do we deny our feelings? Is it human? Is it biblical? I don't think we can deny them. I think if you deny them, then you avoid dealing with them after. You know, so I don't think you can deny it. I think what you do is you put it in a better place. You can't wear it. You can't wear it on your shirt sleeve in a sense. Um, Cause see, it's, it's not the church's problem that you're having a bad day, hmm. whether it's with a person on your team or your spouse or your child, you know, it's not the church's fault. It's not their problem. You have to move on. And, um, you know, some people say, well, then you're just performing and you're not being real. Well, that's not, true um, because we're worshiping God and that's who we're putting our joy in and our hope and our faith and everything's in him, not in ourselves. And so we can put those things aside. We don't deny them. We still have to deal with them because um, if you don't deal with them, they're going to come back again. So you still have to deal with them. You just can't let those things rule your day and rule your worship day. Yeah. Very good. Um, a lot, a lot of people are saying, um, commenting. Thanks, Periscope. Um, Amy is amening on that. And Holly mm -hmm. Harris, a uh, great friend, also has been in our program for two semesters here at Worship Team Training and our mentoring. And um, she had said that you have to let it go in order to worship in spirit and in truth. 
remember our purpose, breathe and say as a group prayer to ask God to give us perspective and place our focus on Him. So that, yeah. that's a great yeah. word, Holly. Thanks for that. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so like, what do you say to younger leaders that are maybe going into this the first time and maybe this is their first year? I mean, I, I'm working with three worship leaders right now that are brand new and one of them just got married and it mm. is their first like month to lead worship as a worship leader. So if you could go back in time and like write a letter to yourself and share it with another younger worship leader, what would it say? Um, yeah, one thing, you know, especially at the beginning is to, um, is to listen to, uh, listen to your critics. You know, don't just poo-poo them, you know, and just say, you know, ignore them. And you have to take your um, critics and you have, you kind of have to put it on a scale. I mean, you know, how much of what they're saying is true. Not everything they say is true. Some of it's just going to be their opinion. Um, but you have to really weigh it. Okay, are they 10%? Is 10% of what they're saying true? Is 80% true? You know, put it on a scale. And try not to be really hurt by that criticism because usually it's not personal. And if it is personal, then I would be less likely to listen to what they have to say. But if it's truly being constructive, take it, weigh it, make the changes you need to make. But you don't need to make an about face every week because somebody complains. Mm. Um, so that's kind of the first thing because you get complaints. And I remember first time I started trying to please everybody. And the worship leader before me at my first church, uh, people would complain and he would you know, how come we didn't have any hymns this week? You know, and then the next week it'd be almost all hymns. And then yeah. how come we didn't have any fast songs? And then the next week it'd be almost all fast songs. And so <laughs> that does that's not helpful, you know? Figure out where your church is going and go that way. Right. And when people complain, try not to let it ruin your day, but weigh it and make the changes you need to make. Right. Um, but don't completely do an about face just because somebody complains. Right. It, it's like mm -hmm. what someone said to me um, when I was first leading worship, they just said, Brandon, opinions are like belly buttons. They all have them. Yeah. You know, and there's, right. there's nothing you can do about it. And um, I had for the longest time to struggle with that and cross the line. And I ask you this question, does worship depend on you and why not? Does it depend? Does worship? No, worship depends. God is going to be worshiped. And uh, you know, it says in the scripture, the rocks will cry out if we don't. Yeah. And so it doesn't depend on me. Um, the Lord uses me and um, allows me to be a part, a, a vessel in a sense. Um, and so I need to be, a, I'm a willing participant, if you will. Mm. But um, it is up to God. I mean, there, there are times when I, I go up and I've had a completely bad day, a completely bad set. You know, it's just one of those things where it's just, you know, mistake after mistake, you know, capo on the wrong fret. I mean, the whole gamut of, yeah. of stuff. And I walk off going, well, that was the throwaway, you know? And then people will come up and say, I can't believe how much the Lord touched me huh. during that service. Yeah. Um, you know, which is just proof that it's not about me. It's about the Lord. Yeah. Obviously, I want to do the best I can. I want to minimize my bad days and uh, minimize those times where I'm focusing on my own problems or my struggles. You want to minimize those as much as possible. But even in those cases, God will use you. You know, if you have a willing heart, because it's about him, it's not about you. Yeah. You know, it's not about me. Wow. Jeff, thanks so much for that, man. Thanks for being on and sharing your time today. Uh, we got to wrap up, but man, it's Thank such, you for having it's me. such a blessing. Had a good time. Yeah, man. So, uh, worship leader in Tucson, Arizona, with um, your church name again? Presidio Church. Presidio Church. Yeah. And uh, so, Jeff, thanks so much for being here with us today and sharing your experience and your heart. Well, you are welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, good friend. Uh, I've known yeah. him for years, and it's great to have him. Uh, thank you guys on Periscope, uh, Intermuth, uh, and Kayla. Thanks so much, Jason. You guys on uh, Facebook Live as well, Holly. Uh, we can probably just go on and on with this type of, uh, I would say, a, a conversation and vulnerability. I mean, that's what it's yeah. about. So we invite you guys to take part in this conversation. Share this out with your friends because, you know, you're not the only worship leader going through these kind of struggles, and that's why we're bringing them to you. So share this out with people that you know, this broadcast, and also we invite you to check out 
Worship Team Training University. That's WTTU.co. Jeff, thanks so much again for coming. It's been a blessing. You are welcome. It's great. And, Fun time. And you can see Jeff also on our Facebook exclusive worship leaders group on that Facebook page, and he helps us manage that. So um, go there right now. That is the Worship Team Training exclusive uh, worship leaders group, uh, something like that. You'll see exclusive group for worship leaders. So join in on that. You'll get more conversation, more discussion. So thank you guys for joining us. Be sure to check out worshipteentraining.com slash workshops if you want a workshop to come to you to work with your worship team, your church, your struggles, your guys. This is what we do. Also, our mentoring program, you can find that out at worshipteentraining.com slash mentoring. So guys, thanks so much again for joining us today here on Worship Teen Training and Worship Teen Training University. Be sure to check out and don't miss Dwayne Moore coming up this Thursday. All you need to do is become a member here at Worship Teen Training University. You can find the links right there. And once you're a member, you will see all more content. We have like 700 articles that we're working on right now to pour into the site. More webinars coming up. You name it. So guys, thanks so much for joining us again. We love you. And we'll see you guys back very soon. Have a great day. Bye.